My fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 gave protections to workers on the basis of sex. But does that word sex also cover gay and lesbian workers or transgender workers? The Supreme Court could decide that when they hear this case more than 50 years after it was put into effect on October 8th. It's the start of a new term and it's one of the most closely watched issues. It's almost a given that Congress at the time in 1964 did not mean for this law to cover this, these more modern civil rights issues. Uh, but it's huge for LGBT individuals who don't want to feel uh, threatened from their livelihood just for being who they are at work. So LGBT rights advocates have been pressing for this for decades and they got a huge boost from the Obama administration in 2012. Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, they viewed this law broadly. This view is consistent with recent guidance from both the EEOC and DOJ that discrimination based on gender identity, including transgender status, is discrimination based on sex. And said that gender identity and sexual orientation are subsets of sex and therefore squarely covered under this law. That brought forward a lot of cases such as Amy Stevens, who is a transgender worker at a funeral home who was fired about two weeks after saying she would be uh, transitioning to appear as a woman at work. The Sixth Circuit sided with Amy Stevens, saying that under Supreme Court precedents uh, that have interpreted this law, she could bring this case and win under the Civil Rights Act. So the Trump administration, when they came into power, flipped positions from the Obama administration and now they're siding with the funeral home. And part of their argument is that Congress could have acted to explicitly put this back in the law to say that sexual orientation and gender identity are covered under 1964 law, but they haven't. And they also say that at the same time they've offered protections to those classes in other types of laws, and so they had the opportunity to do it here as well. The court hears arguments in Amy Stevens' case and two other cases on October 8th and the big deal here is that it's a new court. This is the first time that the Supreme Court will hear a major LGBT rights case since the retirement of Justice Anthony M. Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy was the one who wrote a series of opinions that uh, ushered in a new era of civil rights for LGBT individuals, including same-sex marriage in 2015. But he is now gone, and it is Justice Brett M. Kavanaugh on the court. I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, do solemnly swear. This could be one of the more divisive cases, or there could be some common ground um, that, that the liberal wing and the conservative wing can find. The workers in, this in these cases have a very strong argument based on the text of the law, which is something that a lot of the conservative justices like to use to interpret a law. They like to look at the actual words. And in this case, there is no words that say, it, it, this does not cover sexual orientation or gender identity then that could possibly bring them over um, and, and they could side with the workers. Mm -hmm.